this is the most important club to get fit for. Absolutely. Without and, and question. It's, it's 40% of the game. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Match Play Podcast. I'm Jeff, and this is my buddy, Bill. Hey, guys. Uh, Bill Boost, longtime club fitter out here in San Diego. Happy to be here with you guys. Uh, in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about choosing the right putter for you. And this comes down to explaining some of the knowledge that we know when it comes to fitting putters, as well as uh, some of the personal preferences when choosing the right putter. So, Bill, when we're talking about putters, we really need to talk and educate the viewer a little bit more on the variety of putters that are out there based off of blade putters, mallet putters, hybrid shaped putters, as well as the different types of toe hang, face balance, and of course now some of these new uh, faces that are being uh, produced. Sure, I can go into that a little bit. Uh, let's just talk yeah. about first, you know, your first topic there of just head shapes and what they mean to the player. You know, a lot of guys come in asking to be fit for blades because they like the look to the eye and don't necessarily realize that, you know, you might like the look of the blade, but there's a lot of things we can do nowadays in terms of, you know, smaller mallets, you know, square head putters to really fit every type of stroke. And if you don't know, the reason why we have face balance putters, you know, blade 40 to 60 percent toe hang putters and then teardrops just to touch a few and we'll expand on a few more here in, in shortly is when you're fitting a putter you're looking at the player's stroke and trying to match the flow or how much toe hang there is uh to that player's given stroke that's checkpoint one to make sure we're into a putter that fits your stroke um so when if you're getting fit guys just take come in a little bit open don't say you got to be slammed into a different blade or something like that. Let your fitter, if he's a qualified professional, do his job and fit you for your stroke. And just be open with the way it looks. Um, and there's so many options nowadays in terms of, you know, like I said, toe hang mallets, mid mallets, small mallets, you know, uh, a larger mallet. Like, and I'll just use Odyssey, for example, because their line is pretty all-inclusive, all is, you know, you have your face balance mallet in, like, the 8T in the, mil, in the milled AI face, which is just fantastic, feels wonderful. And then a step back, you have that mid mallet in two different styles, in the 3T and then the Rossi, um, both one with milled, one with, you know, cerulean, cerulean face AI. Um and then from there, you have a couple of different types of blades that you guys might understand. You know, the, the Newport and the Newport 2, the biggest difference is going to be the amount of toe hang in those two. Um, and then going into your traditional, like, uh, Del Mar, which is like your teardrop style putter, which is meant for, you know, 90, you know, a big arcing classic style stroke, very inside to inside. Whereas on the other opposite, opposite end of the spectrum, the face balance putters are much meant for, strokes that go straight back and straight through so if you try if you are a guy that's working towards straight back and straight through but really like the look of the blade sorry <laughs> i mean we're going to be definitely looking into a little larger larger blades possibly mallets to really fit your stroke and make you the best putter that you can be yeah and i, I know from personal uh experience i've always kind of leaned towards those uh, face balance putters are a very small amount of toe hang uh, because I'm closer to straight back, straight through, but I, I, everyone has a slight arc. Yeah. There's no really, there's not really such thing as a straight back, straight I mean, unless stroke. you're Unless you're looking like Bryson. Yeah, unless you're anchored and you're dead over it and there's no way you can bring it inside. It's almost impossible to do. Yeah, exactly. And that's just our so, shoulders, guys. We're at an angle. Our shoulders are at an angle. Your body naturally wants to arc it just a little bit. Yeah, and I think that brings us into another good question is when you're when you're trying to choose the right putter length, what is what is it that you're looking for when you're fitting someone? Uh, there's some there's a couple of key metrics there. Um, it really depends on the player, which we'll find more important, uh, whether or not it be uh, right where their hands meet. If we're looking at a putter that's directly up the forearm into the sternum and they can rock it with their shoulders very easily. That's a checkpoint. And you want to couple that with uh, the eye line of the putter, making sure that their eyes are up over the top of the putter where they're supposed to be so that the player can see the line that they're intending. A lot of players come in, think they're square on the hole, you know, a couple degrees shut, a couple degrees open because that eye line might be a little off or the actual limonades on the head are not ser ser uh, serving their purpose for them. 
Yeah, I mean, alignment aids, honestly, uh, in my opinion, are one of the most important things when it comes to fitting. And mm -hmm. there are so many options out in the industry. If you like a certain look, or obviously when you're when you're getting fit for putters, try as many of the different alignment options as there are, because you're going to find something that when you're set up eye over that ball directly, something's going to outperform the others in terms of that fitter looking down the line behind you when you think you are actually lined up at your target or not. Absolutely. And uh, in, and and in all my fittings, I'll, I'll use a, a red laser. So I'll put that on the top of their putter head when they think they're square and literally show them where they're aimed, whether it be left, right, or straight. And the improvements that we're seeing from maybe, you know, a long single line to a short front line or just different aids for this person to look at, maybe like a, a tailor-made kind of two-toning, you know, white look it, it really suits your eye. There's a lot out there, as Jeff, Jeff referred to. And having a qualified professional look at that and understand what to do with it is a big step forward into finding you the correct putter. Moving on to the next topic, this putter attribute that's been really kind of resurged uh, this past year with was the counterbalance that we mm -hmm. saw in uh, Ricky Fowler's putter. It's something that's been around for a very long time, and it kind of disappeared for a bit, or at least just wasn't in the media very much. Uh, what benefits is this really giving the the player? It lets them feel more weight in the hands. It, they're generally coupled with more head weight, so you get a heavier total weight putter. And for some putters, it allows them to pull the putter back a little easier and swing a little bit more freely. And having the weight on the opposite end of where you're actually gripping it will actually create more of a pendulum like feel typically paired with, like I said, that heavier head weight to create something very, very stable. And if you're a guy that likes stability, understands that five to 10 footers are literally everything. And that's where you're going to find that guy that likes that heavier feel and needs to feel that pendulum to create the most consistent stroke. And that's a lot of us guys out here. But the mo when we're talking about a full full counterbalance, it really comes down to a guy that really needs to find consistency out of his putter and likes to kind of rock it back and forth shoulder. Generally speaking, a fairly decent putter. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. This year was huge when it came to putting materials. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been all sorts of putting materials throughout uh, the history of golf putters. It used to be wood, metal. Um, now we're getting these different alloys. We we this year we were introduced to the AI one putting face, which honestly, in my opinion, and I, I believe in Bill's as well, makes a whole lot of sense because if you think about a putter and you think about originally you want that hottest spot or the best spot to be the sweet spot, um, and when you move off center from that sweet spot, the toe is moving a little bit faster, which when we think about physics, that faster speed makes up for a, maybe a little bit less mass behind that, that part of the face, where the heel itself is actually moving slower. Um, and so when we lose mass there in a typical putter, we're not we're going to be losing a lot more uh, inertia going into the ball, which means we'd, we'd miss putts shorter. And so in this new AI one face, if you've seen any of the ads, it, they show in the, the softer material. What, what's that material? Uh, it's a surlin. Bill? It's a urethane material. Yes. Right. So in that urethane material, they have a little bit more mass high heel transitioning from the sweet spot because it's obviously a little bit slower moving part of the putter. And so that's really giving us that more consistent roll and inertia transfer into that ball so we get better speed control. And from the the engineering standpoint, it, it they were saying that you get about 21% closer with that putter versus actually their milled face, which is a little firmer, is only a 10% increase in proximity to the hole. Or, so super cool stuff coming out of them uh, in that sense. And you got anything to add to that, Bill? Uh, yeah. I mean, the Odyssey AI face is, and it is definitely a breakthrough in design. If you've rolled an even roll recently, or frankly ever, they have the variable groove thickness, the Odyssey, the, this AI is Odyssey's way to do roughly the same thing and give you more ball speed on off center hits, both heel side and toe side. It's really wonderful gotcha. for speed controls and controlling the overall dispersion that that you would have around the hole. Real innovative stuff from the guys over there at Callaway, and uh, we expect more and more from from them in the future here. Yeah, talking about the importance of different things through. Uh 
putter fittings and obviously choosing the right putter for you, getting the proper roll is very key to putting well on if different types of grass, different speeds of grass, <laughs> as well as getting your ball starting on your proper line and not potentially hooking or cutting that ball because that can cause uh, changes in how the ball rolls on the green as well as our, our missing uh, margin of error. So when you're looking for getting a person fit into a putter that rolls optimally for them, is there any putter that you tend to lean towards or are you looking for a certain statistic in terms of launch degrees? Yeah, launching? so it's, it's, it's never actually the putter itself. Generally speaking, I'll always add or subtract loft depending on the delivery of the player. If they're very up on it, they probably don't need as much. If they're very down on it or have a very f firm forward press, then we might need a little bit more loft to hit our average predicted launch of two, which is what we're really trying to do. We'll pair that with a line on the ball as we're testing putters to s visually see and make sure this ball is entering true roll as fast as it possibly can, which is what we want to do and what's going to help players get that consistent roll and kind of get everything moving in the right direction. Um, it, it's all about the loft on the putter plus the player's delivery to produce that end over end that we're really looking for. Gotcha. Yeah. And we're talking about what Bill actually uses and what he's looking for in his fittings. And we're talking about probably the most important club to scoring because we have the majority of our strokes in our round occurring on the putting green. So this is the most important club to get fit for. Absolutely. Without and, and question. It's 40% of the game. I mean, if, if you haven't been fit for a putter, I mean, what are you doing if you're trying to play seriously? Go see somebody, because even if you're a pretty decent putter and making a lot of putts, you can always be a little bit better, especially if you've never been really analyzed on like a Quintech or a Sam Lab. We will find any inconsistency that's there in terms of whether it be facial contact or you know how you attack the golf ball or the role that's put on it in Quintech's case. I mean, you just got to do a look in the rounds in your area and figure out where qualified professionals are that has this technology. Yeah, and I think we've pretty much talked about all the important aspects of choosing the right putter for you. And obviously, everyone has different considerations like budgeting, uh, as well as their personal preferences when it comes to putting. But like Bill said earlier, it, this is probably one of the, the clubs that you can take a little less of your preferences going into a fitting because – these guys are trained to put you into the right putter for your stroke. And you're going to see all the difference if you just let yourself be a little more open-minded. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you you guys are have as many putters for a player to try so that you guys can fit pretty much anyone into whatever budget they have. So be open to that putter fitting. It's really going to help you enjoy the game more, shoot lower scores, honestly, as fast as possible because like bill said it's a it's 40 percent of your score uh it's coming with out of this one club so this is a really important club honestly spending a little extra money is going to be better in the long run anyway it's going to last longer uh in your career of golf as well as just be better for you um there's there's no question about that completely agree well said jeff so we're gonna wrap up this video today uh we hope you enjoyed it Please like, subscribe, and share this. If you have any other questions about putter fittings and how to choose the right putter for you, please comment below, and we'll uh, we'll we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But that's it for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. Take it easy.